In the text that calls for our attention this Lord's Day is our reading from Revelation 22, which begins with these words, Then the angel showed me the river of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. You're invited to be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> if you're the kind of person that likes to get noticed, I have a solution for you. I can almost guarantee that you'll get noticed if you do one thing. Get yourself a nice, large face tattoo. <laughs> it will get you noticed. Yes, get a large amount of ink right up somewhere close to your eyes. Or even those who have tattoos other places will stop and take notice of somebody that has the audacity to get a big face tattoo. Where you see a face tattoo, it can't be hidden. Well, what's there will always be seen, more or less. It's not only permanent, but it's permanently visible. Now, as you might have guessed, I didn't really call you here today to suggest that you get a face tattoo. No, I haven't opened up a little tattoo parlor in town or something like that. Instead, I wanted to draw attention to this idea of having a visible marking on your face because it will help us to catch a detail of our reading from Revelation that we might otherwise not notice. In our book, or in our reading from the book of Revelation today, we are told that all of those who believe in Christ will indeed, in the end, end up with a face tattoo. Now, I understand you might wonder exactly what Bible translation I'm reading from today, but it was right there in the text that we just read, right there in the common translation we use every week. In the midst of talking about God's people living there in the glories of the new heaven and the new earth, it says this, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Now I'll admit, it doesn't say exactly how that name appears visibly on the forehead, but it does say that Jesus' name will be placed there. His name will be right there where everyone can see it. Now, if you don't like that idea, the book of Revelation really tells us that there's only one other option. Everyone, by the end of the book of Revelation, has a visible marking on them. Either you have Jesus' name on your forehead, or you have the mark of the beast on your forehead or upon your hand. <clears throat> Revelation speaks about these two beasts that come forward. A beast out of the sea, which leads us to understand that this beast is coming forth from world governments. And also a beast then that is said to come forth from the earth, which the book of Revelation describes as someone coming forth out of the church itself, but then being led by Satan to go after God's people. The book of Revelation says that when these kind of powers come forward, they often get so powerful that they will not allow anyone to live a normal life of just buying and selling without pledging total allegiance to them. And that allegiance is pictured as having a mark on the head or on the hand. So yes, in the end, in the imagery of this book, in the end you will be visibly marked with one symbol or another. You will be marked with your allegiance to the beast, which the evil one sends forth, or you will be marked with your allegiance to the lamb who sits upon the throne. And these marks of allegiance in the end are a sign of who owns you. They are brands in the sense of how one might brand their livestock in order to designate that that livestock belongs to them. Yes, these marks say of the person mark, this one is mine. Now we all, especially as independently minded Americans, like to think that we simply answer to no one, that we are owned by no one. 
We think that if there's any name going to be placed upon us, it's our own name, and that alone. But the book of Revelation is quite clear that either we are owned by the dragon, who is Satan, or we are owned by the lamb, who is Jesus. But this is where we have to get over our own troubles with hearing this word about being owned. For in the end, being owned is about belonging to someone, and therefore being owned by someone is not a bad thing if the one who owns you is good. Put it simply, if you're owned by Satan, it's a terrible thing. But if you're owned by Jesus, it's the best thing ever. It means you belong to him. It means that he has chosen you, that he has chosen to be responsible for you and your life. It means that he has sacrificed himself in order that you might be well. Do you remember these words from the Catechism explaining the meaning of the second article of the Apostles' Creed? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, from the power of the devil, not with gold or with silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I might be his own and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. Yes, you're owned by Jesus. Why? Well, because he's purchased you. He purchased you from the very things that you had allowed to own you before. Yes, he purchased you from sin, and from death, and from the devil. And the price of purchasing you, well, it was quite high. No, you could not be purchased by some outlaying of worldly wealth, but only by the outpouring of his holy, precious blood. Jesus did this for you in order that you might be his own, that you might get to live under him in his kingdom now, that you might get to serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness forever. In the Old Testament, the high priest Aaron was called to wear what is called a frontlet. It was a plate of metal, of precious metals, I should say, that had some very simple words inscribed on them. On the front, it simply said, Holy to the Lord. This piece of sacred jewelry was to be worn right on the forehead of the priest so that as the people came to interact with the priest, they would be assured that Aaron had been set apart for a holy purpose, namely to deliver to them the very forgiveness and life of God. Well, here is the good news. You too have been set apart as holy. It happened on the day of your baptism. There the sign of the cross was placed upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Did you hear that? To mark you. To place that seal of God upon you. Oh, it's not that some sort of visible ink showed up on your forehead that day. But indeed, on that day you were bought. You were bought by Jesus. And from that day forward you belong to Christ. He owns you. And that's great news for you. For to be owned by Christ is to live in his kingdom, and eternally so. But you should know that having this mark upon your forehead will get you noticed. You will not be noticed because you have some sort of visible ink on your skin, but rather you will be noticed because the Holy Spirit will mark your entire life with fruits that show that you belong to Jesus as you abide in him. You will keep the words of God's book, you will worship God. You'll be willing to sacrifice yourself in order that the needs of others might be met. And when other people see Jesus' ownership of you manifested in the fruits that the Spirit brings forth, well, there will always be two reactions to that. Some will see it and rejoice. They'll see our good works and they'll glorify our God who is in heaven. But then there will be others who will see it and hate it. They will hate the sight of Jesus 
so clearly before their eyes. And that sometimes will mean that both individuals and it could be even large organizations like human governments will try to stop that manifestation of Jesus from being manifested anymore. But when that happens, or if that happens, you need not be afraid. For in the end, you need not fear the people that hate Christ. For if you did fear them, well, in the end, you would just end up with their name written across your forehead instead of Christ. They would want to own you. And that would be bad news indeed. But because Christ's name is upon you, because his spirit is inside of you, you need not fear those who have power in the world. You need not receive the mark of any beast. You need simply to rest knowing that you have been redeemed by Christ. That the sign of the cross was placed upon your forehead and upon your heart. That the very body and blood of the conquering Christ go inside your mouth. You are his. Well, the book of Revelation is certainly not meant to be taken literally in the sense that we are to expect beasts with multiple horns to literally rise up out of the sea. But have no doubt, it is meant to be taken quite seriously. We are to understand that with all of that wild imagery, God is leading us to know very simple and basic truths about the faith. So no, on that last day, will we expect to find a visible tattoo on our forehead? Who knows? But this we do know, is that we will either bear on our forehead and in our hearts the mark of the beast owned by Satan, or we will bear the mark of Christ and be owned by the Father. Thanks be to God that through baptism you have the name of Jesus already right upon your forehead. You are his. And that means that you are safe. So leave behind all fear that would lead you into temptation and sin and rest in the one who has died the new, now, and who has risen. That one who has risen not only from the dead back to earth, but who has risen from the earth even to the skies. The Lamb of God who sits on the throne. It is his name that you wear. Amen.